Even bigger again. Look at the size of them. Oh, man. Wow! Yeah, boom. So this was a pretty small container, um, 20 foot. We loaded, unloaded in like less than an hour and uh, there was only one pallet of engines. It wasn't even full of engines, there was a bunch of random stuff left on it and there was a pallet of wheels. We're just breaking it all down now. Organizing stuff, nine engines. And they're all quite light. Usually we borrow another forklift from the guys we know down the end of the street because this little guy is not up to the task, but they're actually all light engines, S2000 engines, beams, SR20s. So the process each time is now you gotta go through this. Yeah. What is this? Container list of all the items that are on this container. We go through everything one by one and check every individual item with the correspondence SKU that we have just to make sure that everything arrived. An example 923349. So, three, four, nine. Yeah, boom. Rear trunk, lid, wing, R33. Yeah, and then Adrian goes around and he ticks every single thing off, checks everything. So that way then, we make sure everything is here, nothing gets lost, we know what's here for customers. All these are for customers. Yeah, so the ones, yeah. First, I usually just leave them aside and then. Yeah, because they're going to go out first. Because yeah. while we're breaking all this stuff down and organizing it, we got to ship stuff out at the same time, so. Stuff that needs to be shipped out kind of gets put over here and then it gets packed. Yeah, yeah the engines. Break up the pallets. Yeah. Put them on individual pallets. These custom pallets that they make for us, yeah, they need to be smashed up. I like smashing them up with the forklift. Mm. All the wheels. Sean is tackling them right now. Is that going to want to just take off? Maybe not. It's like wedged in there. Looks like a nice tire, look. Yeah, look at that. Plastic. <laughs> yeah, most of these tires. Somebody asked in a video why we have all these tires. But uh, it's cheaper for us to import wheels with the tires on them. It actually costs a bit. How are you? Oh, Sean. How are you but it costs a bit to get these taken off in Japan. I think it's 100 euro for a set. So we just take them off ourselves. And that's what pretty much all these tires are. Some of them are actually decent. And some of them are just plastic. And some of them are just kind of cool. Like these little 14 inch Dunlop slicks that we just kept because they're pretty cool, we'll probably won't see them again. All the wheels have to be taken down and everything will get put over here. Yeah, they're a crazy looking tire. They're uh, Blitzo trees. Ooh, look at these. Yes, there's some pretty cool stuff in this container. So I'm gonna let Sean and Adrian organize everything and then we'll open everything up and we'll have a little look. It would be really nice to fill the wheel wall in the next couple of days and actually get a nice video of the entire wall. I reckon we can do it. The wheel wall has never been full because every time we are just about to fill it, a bunch of wheels sell. And uh, it's good for business, but I would really, really like to fill this to the, to the brim. It's nearly there. There's a couple of missing spots, but uh, it'd be cool to make a nice video on the wall. Let's do it, Sean. Let's fill the wall. Got some cages in this one. There's a cage for a EP71 Starlet. This stuff's ideal to get shipped because if you buy this stuff off Kruber or up garage or whatever, it's really, really awkward to get this stuff shipped. And that's, uh, that's where we come in handy. The container is ideal for awkward stuff like that. Other stuff that we get that's quite awkward from Japan that like is ideal for the container, RB26 crankshaft. Probably 20 crankshaft, weird. And uh, yeah, a roll cage for a Miata, Roadster, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, these things are ideal because it'd cost a fortune to ship these if you wanted to airmail them wherever. So the container is ideal for crankshafts.
These were actually bronze. Somebody painted them, just rattle canned them in Japan, which is nuts. Weird packing. Oh, oh, nice. SE thirty seven Ks. You don't like him? Nice evolution trees. Ooh, ah, oh, er. Nice one, mate. What are these? Ah, oh, these are SP ones. These are already a... <laughs> two came in boxes and two were out of boxes. Oh, nice. Fucker them. American racing, man. My brain hurts. How? <laughs> so these are American racings that are made in Japan. Equipu. Must have been respect. Yeah, unusual. Usually they're a fucking a blingy wheel. SSR MS1. They're nice, fucking huge. Imagine you just slice yourself with a tire. More SS SP ones. <laughs> All right. The center of color is fucking crazy on them. Konex. More blitz. Yeah. Deadly. <laughs> oh, they're fucking huge! A 12J. <laughs> Bigger again. The size of them, man. Wow! Yeah, they are K Brake Fivestas. They are fucking amazing. Turn it sideways. Look at the size of them. <laughs> Look at that tire. So the K Brakes are made by SSR, and uh, these are 11 and a half. Minus 39. <laughs> they are insane. What else is going on? You've already started opening some stuff. More Nismo LM GT. Oh, Kranz. What's this? A magical treat. Oh, fuck. Unreal. Are these sold? What? Casablanca's. Oh my god, man. Fuck. It's rare to see a set of these. I've never seen a set. I've only seen a pair. I've never actually seen a full set of them. So here's a full set of SSR Casablancas in absolutely pristine condition, which is incredible with the original stickers on them as well. Oh, look at them. Enki PFO1s. PFO1s. That is a cool wheel. Like a... Sharper or PF1? Yeah, it's like a, a lipped PFO1. Yeah, some of those new Enkis are really, really nice. They are, yeah. they are very cool. Really nice wheels in the last container. And then some more stuff over here. Sean has the pleasure now of taking some tires off. Repack them now. And then repack everything. So some nice GTCs there, MS1s, and SP1s.
Oh yeah. These are super cool. These are the new Rocket Bunny wheels that are going with that Pandem kit that uh, was recently purchased. This is actually for an Irish triple rotor FC build. And uh, yeah, he's gone for the full track Kyoto 6666 look, Pandem look. These are superb. Yeah, so it's pretty badass that he bought the Pandem kit and he bought the Pandem wheels. And yeah, it's cool that this is getting built in Ireland. It's gonna be a triple rotor and yeah, they're amazing. They're like an old BBS minus the center cap, but then they've incorporated that into the, the look of the wheel. Because I remember the first Rocket Bunny S13 had a set of these, but I think they were BBS RSs or whatever, but they had the center cap taken out. Gotta appreciate anyone that buys this stuff. It's amazing that somebody, you know, just splash out by brand new Rocket Bunny wheels and the FC kit. Japanese water. This is the next step then. The next step is <laughs> and we soak the place in water. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So once the container came, all the wheels were organized, organized into stacks. Into stacks. And then the ones with the tires have to get the tires to off them. Yeah. Ones without tires. They're put into piles. Yeah. Labeled. Checked for cracks and buckles. And if any of them are buckled or cracked, they get sent off to be repaired. Then Neil takes photos. These ones are all lined up. So we're actually trying to fill the wall this time. Yeah. Sean has the pleasure of taking the tires off. I wonder if we'll actually get to fill the wall or will the wheels be gone? I've never seen it completely full. Sean's just writing the trying to attempt them. The skew on it then so we can identify the wheels when we photograph them or when a customer buys them. It's nice and convenient so we just write a skew on all the wheels. It just makes life a lot easier because we do get a lot of the same wheel. So it's good to keep track of them. Thank you. 